Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kayla from Planning with Kay, and welcome to another video. I asked in my last video whether or not you wanted to see different styles of monthly bullet journal spreads, and so many of you said yes, so I'm here today to show you five different types of monthly logs to help you stay organized next month in your bullet journal. I'm going to be setting these monthly spreads up in this gold foiled Tombow Dockard notebook, and I'm actually going to be giving this away over on my Instagram next week, along with a bunch of other fun planner supplies. So be sure to follow my Instagram at Planning with K so that you know when that giveaway goes live. All right, so the first monthly log that I'm going to be setting up is a calendar style. As you may know, I tend to stick to a really simple calendar setup for my own monthly logs in my journal, so I wanted to show that there are a lot of ways that you can jazz up a simple calendar spread to make it even more functional for you. The easiest way to play around with a calendar monthly log is by changing the size and location of the calendar itself to give yourself more space for other things. In this example, I'm pushing my calendar down to the bottom left corner of the spread, which gives me a really nice open space on the right side that I'll be using later. And for this calendar, each day takes up the box that is four spaces wide and five spaces tall. In my own journal, I tend to gravitate towards a calendar style like this for showing all of my monthly events for a couple reasons. One, I'm just used to looking at calendars. It's what I've seen my entire life and it clicks in my brain. I like being able to see each week in its own row and it's really easy for me to look at a glance and see what's happening on what day. I also like the space that it actually gives me to write in my events. I can usually fit one event or task per line in these little boxes, which means that I can fit a list of four or five different things in each day, which I find is usually what works for me. Now on the right side of the calendar, I'm creating a spot for some weekly to-do lists, which is a good spot to write down general tasks for each week that don't necessarily correspond to a specific day. And having this separated by week is an easy way to keep your list more organized and easier to complete. Above that, I'm gonna make a spot for jotting down my top three goals or tasks for the month. Think of these as your main monthly priorities. If you could only get three things done this month, what three things would those be? You then just write those down here, separated from your other task lists, so that way they don't get lost in the shuffle, and at a minimum, you'll be sure to remember to get those three most important things done. Now I'm gonna use the remaining blank space on the right side for a monthly habit tracker. And here I made this tracker seven spaces wide to fit seven habits, but if you have more or fewer habits than this, you can always change the width to accommodate that. I think that this is a really great option for those of you who don't have so many habits that they need their own full spread habit tracker. Instead, you can save yourself the pages and the effort and just include a mini version like this on your monthly spread, which makes it really easy to see every single event, task, and habit that you need to complete that month all at once. Now I'm just going to complete this spread with some fall leaf decoration, which is just perfect for November, and I'm actually going to be decorating each spread today with a different theme, all of which are available in my sticker shop. And of course, everything that I'm using will be linked in the description below. The next example I'm going to be setting up today is a circular style monthly log. The easiest way to do this yourself is to basically scour your home for circular objects until you find some that are the correct sizes that you want. In this case, I found this big roll of tape for my smaller inner circle and then a circular lid that's slightly larger for the outer circle. And this ends up giving me this ring in the center of the page. I'm then going to divide this ring into 32 equal pieces, and the reason I do 32 rather than 30 is that 32 pieces is by far the easiest to do by eye if you just keep cutting the circle in half. So first you split this ring in half, and then you split that into quarters, then eighths, sixteenths, and finally it should be split into 32 roughly equal sections. Since there's 30 days in November, I'm then just gonna combine the last two spaces into one, which gives me 30 equal spaces for the 30 days of the month, and one extra space at the end that I can color in to separate the first day from the 30th. Now, personally, I absolutely love how circular trackers like this look. Aesthetically, they definitely appeal to me, but there is a reason that I rarely use them. And that's because unless you have one of those fancy special helix circle maker things, I find that it's really a pain to set up. Case in point, this was actually my second attempt at this spread, I'll be real with you, since the first time my circles were a little bit too wonky and off center for my tastes. 
And even here, the circles are definitely not perfect. So since I love how circle logs look, but I absolutely hate, hate, hate setting them up, I decided to create a bunch of circular stickers to make things a little bit easier for myself and for you guys. So if you feel the same way about circular trackers as I do, be sure to check out the three new listings in my shop, which are perfect for monthly logs, mood trackers, and habit trackers. So finally, I'm finishing up this circular monthly log with crystal themed sticker decoration and a little color code at the bottom that I'll use to mark certain types of important events, for example, bills, birthdays, holidays, and paydays. Next up, I'm going to show you another variation on a circular monthly log. And this time I'm just going to take the easy route and use one of my new circular monthly log stickers rather than setting it up by hand again. So besides their aesthetic appeal, I do think that these circular logs are really, really useful and they're functional in ways that other layouts aren't. The main benefit being that you're not at all limited in how much you can write under each day. Unlike calendar or list style monthly logs that have a sort of predefined space for each day, circular layouts are a lot more flexible since you can basically write down as much or as little under each day as you want. So I think that this sort of layout would be particularly good for anyone who has some super, super, super hectic busy days in their schedule days when you know that a little calendar box or a single line just won't be good enough to fit everything. Circular monthly logs are also really cool because you can easily make them into a tracker. For example, here I'm making the circular log into a mood tracker as well, with a simple color code at the bottom of the spread, so that way you can just fill in the blank box with your mood color for each day. So now that the left side of this spread has the monthly log and the mood tracker, I'm going to move on to the right side for my task list. I'm first using the peony stickers from my shop for decoration and I'm then just splitting the page in half. The left side will be for my task list and I'm using one of my checkbox stickers for this as well. The right side will then be titled thoughts and notes and it'll be a spot for me to jot down any stray ideas, notes, or reminders throughout the month that don't quite belong on your monthly log. And I'm splitting this up into business and personal to keep it a bit more organized. So now that I've showed you a calendar layout as well as two circular monthly logs, it's time to dive into a list style monthly spread where you list the days up and down the length of the page. As you guys know, I tend to be lazy when it comes to writing out dates, so as usual, I'm gonna be using one of my number strip stickers from my shop. This sort of list style monthly log is what I consider to be like the OG bullet journal monthly log, and it's arguably the easiest to set up since it requires the least amount of measuring. All you really have to do is list one through 30 or 31 down the page. Now for this spread, I'm gonna split the left page into two columns to organize my events for the month one for school events and the other for personal events. And I'm using these leafy green stickers for decoration. Now, since I already have my days listed vertically down the page, I thought this was another perfect spread to include one of those mini habit trackers, similar to the first spread that I set up. I'm just creating my habit tracker on the other page, lined up with the days on the left. And again, you can make this as wide as you want, depending on how many habits you have. Here in this example, I'm making it 11 spaces wide to fit 11 habits. Now in the remaining blank space, I'm first going to create my task list section to jot down all of the to-do list items for the month. Then below that, I'm going to have a section called best of, which is essentially for listing all of your favorites throughout the month, meaning the favorite movie you saw that month, favorite song, show, book, etc. And this will provide a really cute little snapshot of what you were really into that month. And remember that for all of these layouts, these little modules are totally customizable. If a best of section, for example, doesn't appeal to you, you can always use this space for something else, like a note section, you could fill it up with a decorative quote, or you could just lengthen your task list for the month. 
The possibilities really are endless, so don't get discouraged if one part of a spread isn't quite working for you, and instead figure out what you can put there instead. All right, so now we're on to the last monthly log that I'm gonna be showing you guys, which is going to be a space-themed calendar style with a Dutch door. All this means is that I'm going to be cutting the right side page in half, which gives me this little extra flap dividing up my spread, and you'll see how I'll use this a little bit later on. First, I'm starting off by drawing in my calendar on the left page. Each day is gonna take up a box that is three and a half spaces wide by four spaces tall. Like I said earlier, changing the size and position of your calendar on a spread like this can absolutely change its functionality. So be sure to play around with different ways to orient your calendar and figure out what works for you. By leaving a space below the calendar here, I've given myself a spot for jotting down my monthly goals. And I'm gonna split those up into two categories, work and personal. So now I'm gonna move on to that little Dutch door flap that we created in the middle. On the side that shows with the calendar, I'm gonna create the section for my task list. Again, using a checkbox list sticker to help me out. Now on the other side of the flap, I decided to put a gratitude log here by sticking in a number strip sticker on the left side and then writing gratitude at the top. And again, if a gratitude log doesn't sound useful for you, you could always use this space to fit in basically any other kind of list style tracker, like a habit tracker, mood tracker, spending log, or whatever else comes to mind. So now that the flap is all filled up, I'm moving on to the right side of this spread to create a section for notes and a spot to keep track of all of my monthly bills. When creating any Dutch door setup like this, be sure to keep in mind what sections are visible when. For example, here I made sure that my task list and my bills section are both visible when I'm looking at my calendar. So that way I can see at one glance all of the relevant events, tasks, and bills for the month. Then when I turn the flap, that's when I can see the gratitude and notes sections, which aren't as relevant to my main monthly calendar. And just like that guys, we're done with all five of these monthly bullet journal logs. I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing all the different ways that you can set up and arrange your main monthly log spread. And I challenge you to try mixing things up next month. It really can never hurt to try out something new with your bullet journal setup. And whether it's a calendar, list, or circular style, the possibilities here are really endless. These were just five examples that I showed you, but I'm sure you guys can already imagine how you can mix and match all of the components you saw me use today to create something totally new and your own. If you do decide to give any of these a try, be sure to tag me in a photo on Instagram so that way I can see it and like it. And don't forget that I'll be hosting a huge giveaway over on my Instagram this coming week. So be sure to stay tuned for that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. And let me know in the comments below what video you want to see next. Follow me on Instagram at Planning with K if you're not already. And be sure to check out the links to my sticker shop, Patreon, and all other social medias in the description below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.